I'm an anthropology teacher at a small university near my hometown, and I have about 200 students a day. One student in particular, though, seems to be an ongoing source of trouble. His name is David, and he seems to always be the one to interrupt class or not do the assignments. I recently had them start a new project, in which they spend a week submerging themselves in the culture of their choice, and write an essay about it. David did his usual sigh that he does every time I give them work, and started snickering to his friends like usual. After class, I asked to speak with him, and begged him to do this project. I thought it would be good for his academic demeanor to have a nice cultural experience. He seemed like he could have a lot of potential if he applied himself, and I wanted to help him recognize this. He seemed to brush this off, but begrudgingly said he would try to do the project. I thanked him and told him I was excited to see his project. Two days later, I asked him if he had any ideas for his project yet. And he told me he had met a fellow who had just moved to this town from Moscow, and that he would be happy to help him with his project. I told David I was very happy to see him taking initiative on the project. The rest of the week, he seemed a little bit different. It wasn't too noticeable at first. It started with him not being as interruptive, and he started smiling. Not just a normal smile. It was like a smug grin, like he was high, or someone was forcing him to smile. Then he started talking to other people, but instead of being rude, he was talking about philosophy and the human spirit. That was odd. He was never one to discuss the human condition. He was not that great of a human himself. Then, he began to lecture people. When someone did something that was morally wrong, he told them that they would regret that when they came. I wondered if he'd been exposing himself to some weird religion, but I swept it aside as him just turning over a new leaf. At the end of the week, everyone had to turn in their essays, and David came up to my desk, smiling that same odd smile and told me in an eerily calm voice that he sincerely hopes I enjoy his eye-opening experience. I had been grading for a while when I finally came across David's essay. This is what it had to say. Over the past week, I have been ever so lucky to be on the receiving end of an amazing, life-changing experience in which I could have a first-hand view of such a wonderful and interesting culture. Through the help and mentoring of one Raphael Simmer of Moscow, I was exposed to the lives of the children of tomorrow's promise. Such a lasting impression this wonderful culture had brought upon me, that I feel it a crime not to share it with you. I'll start with the motivation for this immersion. An anthropology course which I have been taking for quite some time assigned me to partake in another culture for one week. The next day, as I was walking the street of my town, I was introduced to the aforementioned Raphael Simmer. He told me he was from Moscow, in which he'd been living in a lively subculture, a great group of people who I got the privilege of living with for a week, and possibly much longer if all goes well. These men taught me of the importance of moral purity, and the cleansing of the human soul, as soon, on a day not too distant in the future, they will come and bring us the sweet life of all the people that shall be entitled to. I'm ever so delighted for this day to come. Smile, repent, await the promise. Oh how happily I have sung the above motto over and over again in my head. So eagerly I have helped to shape my peer's character into that of an acceptable kind, and how wonderfully I will breathe for the final time when we witness the promise. We are the children, the children of tomorrow's promise. This project has taught to me the great value of life and I only hope that I can carry this wisdom into the afterlife that I will so soon be ascending to. Let your spirit rise with me. Let yourself be saved. With us. Join us on the 30th of the third month for the great awakening of the year 2017, in which we will secure our own endings for the approval of them, the greater beyond. 
What the hell? That was some actual cult shit right there. David never spoke this properly or cryptically. By the sound of it, it was sounding like he was about to join in on some mass suicide. Maybe it was a joke. Maybe he took this as an opportunity to scare the shit out of me. I could only hope. I waited to give him his grade on his assignment until I could speak with him privately about it. Until then, I was going to pray that this wasn't what I thought it was. Then, this morning came. I opened my laptop at 9 this morning to find an email from David. In it, it said, Thank you. Thank you so much for giving me this project. Without it, I would be left to the corrupt, unsaved world, and would be robbed of the glorious life I am about to enter. I only hope you can save yourself as well. What a glorious day it is. Shit. 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 The email was sent to me two hours ago at seven on the dot. I quickly emailed him back, asking what he meant, but he's not responded. What have I done? Did I make a student inadvertently join a suicide cult? I sat there for hours, hoping that David had not fallen victim to some kind of crazy doomsday society and killed himself. At 1pm, I heard my phone buzz. It was a notification from my local news channel. I looked at the text on the screen. 28 found dead in mass suicide near a neighborhood in my town. Motivation is not yet known. Updates to come. 